Welcome back to Inside. Let's uh, continue our adventures as this massive blob thing. God, it's so fascinating just to watch it move. And watch this. Look at that. I can hear some of the, like, people it, caught up in this whole thing kind of like groaning and, you know, some of them are experiencing pain, some of them aren't. Depends on where they are when we hit the ground and stuff. God, it's strange. Alright, uh, so I just grabbed this, I don't know what this is, box, server rack, something, piece of machinery from the left, so I assume we need to take it to the right somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where, but let's do it. It's interesting to me that these people in the background, I mean, they're obviously terrified of me, but at the same time, they're not completely running away, right? Why? Are they watching in, like, horrid fascination? I saw their arm on the ground twitch. It's still moving. Those are body parts, right? Maybe that's not the person's body parts. Maybe that's body parts from like me that fell off. That might be it. Because if not, that then that implies that even these, I believe, normal people even I have some influence over these normal people, right? Like, we've seen the the servants. Even their little body parts. Or even if they're dead, like, they can sort of flop around and move a little bit. Especially when I'm around them, I seem to have some control over even dead flesh. But if it happens with even normal people, then the special thing is me and, and not the servants, necessarily. thing above that uh, that red light up there. I don't know if that's like a big button or what. Oh, whoa. Oh my god! <laughs> Are these dogs really gonna try to attack me? Definitely resistant. Oh. Oh.
They're willing to open the door for me. Is that just to save their own ass, or...? Or are they trying to help me? Like, am I... What am I to them? Yeah. They're guiding me along. They want me to do something. It's like they were trying to create something like this, but I guess they didn't expect it to get so out of control, perhaps. <laughs> they go from side to side to get a little bit further away from me. That's cool. Can I actually fit down here? Oh, God. Uh, hold on. There's like a little flame symbol on that thing up there. Oh, yeah. Some more parts of me fell off. But yeah, I think this might be like some exhaust thing. This might kill me. I assume I need this. Oh my god, look at that. I can... I can pass it around. My, like, entire circumference except for the bottom of me. Oh my god, that's amazing. Throw it up. Ah. Oh. <laughs> cool. If we go into deep water, I wonder how this thing is going to swim. need to light that thing back there, huh? Oh god, this is gonna hurt to grab, though. Oh. Oh. They're watching me up above now. Um. Hmm. I think I see what to do. I probably need to toss it over and catch it before it hits the water. I think I do. Oh, there's another one. Pilot light, gotta light it. Yeah, 
yeah, they're like waiting for me. They're they're ready to help me do whatever it is and whatever it is they want me to do. Sorry. <laughs> Got all those groans. I just want to see if there's anything back here behind the mine well not mine carts, but the tram things. I guess somebody watched TV back here. A couple people. Two chairs and a miniature TV. Maybe I can, like, reach this thing up here and push it closer to them? I probably can reach this. Yeah, there we go. Oh, do I need to swing? It's just like hanging loose. Yeah, they're pointing up there, telling me, like, do that. So, how do I activate this thing? That's the hard part. I can't throw it far enough, so I definitely need to activate it. The handle only pops up when it's, like, resting on the ground. As soon as I pick it up, it disappears, and then it pops back up. Hmm. Maybe I need to toss it to them, and they'll activate it? Yeah, they're saying like, here, give it here. Oh, that is so cool. Gotta be faster. What the hell is this? It's like everybody's watching this big event. I have a fucking audience. It's like they're all wondering, can it pass? Can it pass the test or something? How close are we to the end? Oh, we're almost there. I'm on one from the very last save point. Why are they so comfortable? I mean, mo many people have already died that have been in my pathway. Obviously, this exact way of getting here wasn't entirely expected, but they did expect me to get here, obviously. I mean, what's to prevent me within the game's universe from just going back there and just killing every one of them? It was bait.
so this thing can swim. This is just a containment tank, isn't it? Ooh, maybe not all that well contained, though. I see some light coming through the cracks. I think we need a running start. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Okay, before ending this playthrough of Inside, I want to see if I can get the secret ending. But I don't want to have to play through the entire game to get it, so... I want to see if I can load a previous save, get the orbs that I missed, and then load the future save. And if it will kind of, like, retroactively apply. So, let's see. This is apparently where the first orb is. I looked up a guide on where they are, the ones that I missed. And, uh, yeah, as you can see on the board, most of them, like the first three, those are mostly ones at the very beginning of the game before I really knew what I was doing or what I was looking for, those yellow cords specifically. 
And this first one is after you get chased by the pack of dogs and you dive into this water. Instead of going to the right, you go to the left and down. Looks like someone had a campfire here recently. It's a little bit of smoke. Okay, will that apply? Oh, look at that, it does! Oh, good. I was hoping the game wouldn't force you to play through literally the entire game again just to get them all. Okay, first one's lit up. Um, I believe the second one is in the cornfield. There's apparently a secret hatch somewhere in the cornfield. Oh. I think... Ah, oh, it's right here. Wow, that's like almost completely invisible. I only found it just because I... Ooh. Okay. Kid didn't want to use the letter. I only found it because I was holding down the interaction button. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even been able to spot it, really. Whoa. Secret photographer's hideout. Also, that picture directly above me. That's a picture of that giant hulking blob. I wonder if I'm not the first one. That's like a survival bunker. What is this? Hmm. This is suspicious. Yeah, I couldn't find any information about that switch. I, I don't think you can do anything with it. Alright, so the next one is here. You can see the cord there, obviously. Apparently we need to do something with the pig carcasses. We need to, like, drag the cart over, I think. Ah, I see. Yeah, we can definitely pull these boards. Life pigs. They seem very quiet. What a miserable place they're living in, though. They're just living in the dark. Sort of. A little bit of light coming through the broken roof. Just being rained on. more to go. Okay, the next one that I missed is apparently here. I think there's a deeper section in the water. Uh, this is that whole, like, spotlight section where you gotta move this thing to provide you with shadow. Provide you with cover. So there's supposed to be a deeper section in the water here, and apparently you can swim down? Aha. I did not find this. I remember noting that I fell down. And by the way, this is... Yeah, this is after I gained the ability to breathe underwater. I remember noticing that I got a bit deeper there, but I didn't think to actually try to go down. Ooh, I wonder if it would still shoot me. I can see the light a little bit. So, where's the orb? Ah. Uh. No, it looks like it doesn't shoot me. 
so I need to move the handle up above to move that, right? Where do I need to move it to? Where do I need to move it to? I guess just more down so it's deeper in the water. This should do it. Yeah. Okay, the next one is here. You see that yellow cord above me? So apparently we need to do some fancy stuff with our uh, servant friends. So they just fell down here. So if I fall down, I should be fine. There we go. So apparently I need to split them up. I need some... I need some to lift me up onto the yellow thing, and I need some to be on top of the lift. So some with me and some on top of the lift. I'm guessing we do that by not totally going to the left here, so I just want some of them to come off, like that. Oh. Hmm. Okay, that doesn't work. Um... Okay, that works. There we go. Okay, so now I can use them to throw me up. Yeah, this one's pretty well hidden. Wow. And then apparently I need them for something to throw me somewhere. Oh, they need to throw me up, too, because it's on the ceiling. Gotcha. Okay. So that should be all of them. And I think this will be open. Yeah. Now, don't get too excited just yet. We're not quite at the secret ending. I to see inside. I guess I'll just grab it something. Ah. Oh, I just pulled it out. All oh, right, this is the apparently the final one, the big one. And one light is left running. Oh, wait, I think that might be... Maybe the... I think the door will be open in the bunker beneath the cornfield now. I think that's it. Yeah, the light's on. Okay, so I've heard... I haven't actually had the secret ending itself spoiled to me. I've, I've just been looking up where the things are and, like, what you're supposed to do kind of vaguely. Um, I believe this makes musical sounds. Yeah. Okay, so I have seen that, of course, they just, in guides online, they just give you the password, but I'm more interested in trying to find it for myself. I think they said you have to get it from clues that are playing on, like, a radio or something. So there's two places that have those same sounds that are made when you move that lever left, up, or right, and they're both at these orbs. The first one is here. I remember actually noticing that there was some music playing from here, but I never thought that it would be part of some puzzle that I'd have to memorize. The tricky thing about it, though, I just transcribed it down, I think, but the tricky part about it is that the notes are very dirty and they're not... It's not super easy for me to hear what pitch they are. Like, I'm pretty sure I got it, but it's a little bit hard to hear. Um, not to mention it's just quiet, too. But also, I don't know where it starts and where it stops. So, I don't... Yeah, I don't know how to enter it exactly. But I have it written down. Uh, let's go find the other one. Okay, well, I went to both audio recording... Or audio playback places, and I transcribed my best approximation of them. I'm, I sorted them into low, medium, and high pitches, since there's only three notes. And I even figured out which one, which one of these directions on this lever corresponds to which note. So right is high, uh, left is medium note, and then up is low note. High, medium, low. 
I figured that out. However, looking at my transcriptions of both of them, I have no idea what to actually enter here. So I'm looking at the solution and there's 14 notes that need to be played to solve this thing. But again, for each of those two recordings, I don't know where it stops and starts exactly. It's, it does It does start to loop, of course, but like, at which point do I start entering the password? Also, for both of them together, they combined have way more than 14 notes. It's like, I don't understand how to get from my transcription to the solution. It's possible I made a transcription error, very, very possible. But even if I did, I still don't understand how I would get to the solution. So, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna enter the, uh, the password from the guide online. I tried. So it's... this door. All I've heard is it's odd, and there's fan theories about what it means, but I don't know what they are. control things in the background. A bunch of wires hooked up to it. Disconnected myself. Hmm. You know, probably about halfway through the game, I actually had a guess that was sort of similar to that ending. I was thinking, I wonder if there's going to be a big twist at the end. And I had an absurd thought that I dismissed immediately because it made no sense. But I can control other people, and I can control other people who then control other people, so you can layer the control. And I was thinking, what if, what if there's a big reveal where somebody's controlling me? Like, the main character is being controlled by somebody. But the reason I completely dismissed it is because when the kid controls other people, they're obviously very, like, their movement is not quite human. It's not normal, right? They're kind of, like, floppy and sort of a little bit zombie-ish. Like, they're being very... Uh, they're being controlled, but, you know, not in a very precise way. They get the job done, but... Yeah, they're all very floppy and weird, and they kind of, like, shamble along. Which is not at all how it is for the kid. The kid is, you know, perfectly, precisely controlled. Way finer control than any of the servants that I controlled. Which is why I dismissed it. Something interesting about that ending, though, is that there wasn't a person in the control unit. That control unit was hooked up to a bunch of wires. Not to a person. So that's different from how I controlled them. Okay, so let's wrap up with some thoughts on Inside. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was incredibly good. Let's just start with how it looks and how it feels. So it's gorgeous. Um, it's very... It's obviously very dim. It's very dark, very dim, very gloomy. There's really not that much color at all. And yet I still describe it as beautiful. Just... For some reason, it looks beautiful, even if it is grim. 
beautiful grimness. It's incredibly atmospheric. The visuals are just so finely polished and tuned, and everything is wonderfully stylized and clean-looking, but dirty when it needs to be. Before I talk about how it feels to play, let's talk about how it sounds. This game sounds just wonderful. It's got a very minimalist soundtrack, but when it does appear, it's this wonderful, atmospheric, all-encompassing, reverby feeling that it gives me. And when it comes to sound effects, it's... Oh, it, it's perfect. Every like thing that you grab makes clicks and clunks and everything feels satisfying. And even the smallest details like the kid's hand sliding against a, a stone wall or something like that, you can actually he hear that. You can hear the skin on stone. The way it feels to control the kid is absolutely astounding. Like I said at the beginning, the controls are incredibly simple. You just have the movement stick and then literally two buttons. One is jump and then the other is just grab. And that's it. But with those controls, it does so much, and everything feels just perfect and spot on. Everything about the way the kid moves and jumps and grabs onto things and swinging on ropes, grabbing and pushing things, it just feels absolutely perfect. And it looks perfect and it sounds perfect all at the same time. Like the, the character controller for the kid is just so spot on. They must have put so much work into making that feel and look and sound good all at the same time. And that's... <laughs> and then that's not even to mention the fact that the character controller for the kid in the last, like, I don't know, fifth of the game or so, when you start controlling that gigantic blob, they just completely switch that character controller out for a very dramatically different one. Controlling that blob also feels amazing. You know, it's not nearly as responsive or snappy as a kid because it's not supposed to be, it's this gigantic blob. It's not exactly the most elegant thing to control. But it still feels and looks and sounds amazing. That thing was a work of art. The way that it has limbs all over, and if it like falls forwards or backwards or whatever, I guess it doesn't even really have a forwards or a backwards, but if it falls one direction, it doesn't like get back up on the same feet. It just, new feet come out and start walking, so the thing can just like rotate as much as it wants to, just keep going. Any side of its body can do any function. It's got legs, arms, whatever it needs. And you can, like, when I grab that box that I burned and put into that pilot light thing, the fact that just the movement stick alone, and also holding down the, the grab button, of course, but the movement stick, just moving that around allowed me to move where the box was on, like, the outside of the character, all the way from the left side to the top side to the right side and everywhere in between, except not the bottom side, of course. Such incredibly simple controls, but it allows you to do so many advanced things. Another thing I really loved about Inside is how elegantly it told a story and kept me engaged with all these mysteries and all of that without even having a single line of dialogue. Like some of the early stuff we saw were those those chambers that people are kept inside of and I think that's where they're made into servants, where their brains are, are fried or whatever happens to them. We saw those people being taken away into a truck, so they're obviously like processing people in mass. Then I was fascinated by, oh, why does everybody want to kill me? On, on sight. Shoot me, maul me to death with a dog, strangle me. Like, it doesn't matter, they want me dead, even though I'm a kid. And then I was fascinated by the fact that they seem so normal in some ways. I mean, they don't seem normal when they're chasing after me with the dogs or shooting me. But when we saw some of the office workers and stuff, or the people doing quality control on the servants, Right? They just look like normal people, <laughs> filling out clipboards, they even had kids with them and stuff. And like, they don't mind killing people directly in front of their kids. Like, that just fascinates me. What kind of a world this is, where these people would act this way and not seem to have any remorse at all for these people. And then there's the either evolution or just revealing of the kids' powers. Again, I don't know if their powers grew or if we just saw more of them. But at first we could control the servants. Next, we could control the servants without actually being directly connected to that mind thing. Or, we were connected to the mind thing, but the mind thing wasn't connected to a cord, which was strange. And that worked for a little bit. And then later on, I could control them without being connected to anything whatsoever. And then even further than that, I became a giant blob monster, which I'm assuming is another kind of evolution of controlling more and more people. Now I was in control of a huge, strange organism. Like, that's just fascinating. 
Is this... This kid must be special. This kid is very special somehow, which I'm guessing is why they wanted them dead. Yeah, this world is... Sick. The experiments... And the things they've been doing to people is horrible. And they've made so many disturbed things, like... What about those mermaid creatures? The one that took me down? And then plugged me into a thing and then made it so I could breathe underwater? Like, they must have made those, right? Failed experiments or something? I don't know, it's just... it's horrible, but fascinating. And in the end... The giant blob... Escaped. Tried to contain me, but I was too strong. <laughs> Got out into the... Into the world and... It's kind of like a beached whale just on the beach in the sun. Just trying to catch my breaths, I guess. What's going to become of that thing? Is it going to grow? Does it need to eat? What, like, what the hell is it going to do? Also, how does the kid fit into it? Kind of literally. So the kid got, like, sucked into it. They kind of, like, grabbed the kid. And as soon as the kid went inside of it, I was able to control it. But what I'm wondering is, is the kid actually alive in there? Like, could the kid come back out? Or have they been made part of that sort of, I don't know, hive mind blob thing? I don't know. God, that thing is so disturbing. Alright, well, that has been Inside. I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.